Hello and welcome back. This is Sherry with Heart and Soulful back in the studio in this new 2024 year. I'm getting kind of a late start in the year and I know I have not posted anything in a couple of months. I actually did post a video a week or so ago that I need to redo. So some of you may have seen the video I did on resin feathers. I will be doing another one. I had um, someone bring an issue up in the video that I was not aware of and so I need to redo the video. Uh, and haven't done so. So in the meantime, I had started cleaning my studio. I don't know if, if how you are, but every January, I kind of look back at the last year and look forward at what I want to do for the new year. And it's always a good time for me to kind of clean out my studio. I started a while back. Uh, and when I say clean out my studio, I go through everything and I have a tendency to get sidetracked and actually do the project. If I have something sitting there that was part of a project or a started project, I want to finish it before I move on. Otherwise, it just gets moved around and never, uh, I never kind of end up purging anything. So that's what I'm doing now, and which means I'm going to be sharing more things with you. I, in a previous life, uh, did a lot of decorating, home decorating, and I had super expensive taste in fabric. I was one of those people that bought the entire bolt of decorator fabric. Uh, because I was doing large projects, um, a lot of high-end homes, uh, bedding, draperies, and they take a lot of yardage. And I was uh, just in love with lots of trims and really expensive fabrics. So as a result, I have a lot of that still in my studio, even though I don't do that anymore. I've never been able to part with all these yummy fabrics because they're so expensive and gorgeous and I figure even the scraps I can use for something I just don't want to throw them out or take them to a thrift store some may end up there I have over the years but uh, I wanted to share them now that I'm doing this more making and junk journals and that kind of thing there's so many of you out there that may not have the stash that I have the types of fabric that I have or access to them, uh, it, it, it's it's kind of better than if you uh, were to go to a furniture store and ask for their swatches. These are all larger pieces than that, so they're more usable. So I want today to share with you some bundles that I've put together that are gonna be in my Etsy shop. There will be a link down below when this goes live so that uh, you can just click on that. I'm only going to have, of what I show you today, there are only six of these bundles, um, boxes. And that's all there will be of this with these sizes because I've gone through all my fabrics now and this is what I came up with. Now, having said that, I do still, when you see my studio tour and I finally do it, I do still have baskets and baskets and baskets of these types of fabrics that I'm still hanging on to because they're even larger pieces. So at some point I may make some more bundles, they'll be different than this, but um, this is kind of a, once they're gone, they're gone. Uh, I will be also making some with smaller size pieces, uh, but I wanted to do some really awesome boxes with this size because they'll be really handy for people who are doing junk journaling or other things. Um, there'll be plenty of fabric um, to do for book covers. So what I did was I took this book, which is a pretty large size. I think it's about 14 inches this way. It has a pretty thick spine. So I think it measured 14. Let me grab a ruler here. I'm pretty sure this was 14 by, so this was a spine that's a two inch spine and then by um, almost nine inches. So that's a fairly good sized book. A lot of uh, junk journals even end up being more of a reader's digest size, which is a little smaller than this. And then this is one that I had made, uh, my slow stitch journal that's made out of a cereal box or something like that. So for those of you making yours out of recycled material, you can make any kind of size you want. So you can kind of see that roughly a journal is going to um, fit, you know, this size. This is actually quite a large one too, a little narrower, but about the same height. So um, that's what I, I use to gauge as I cut the pieces of fabric so that I can get as many of these nice boxes together as I could with usable sizes. So in all of these six boxes, everything is at least this size. 
some obviously a little bit larger so you could fold over and then some quite a bit larger. So uh, that was the guide that I used. And then as far as um, the quantity in the boxes, it's about four pounds um, when I, it's about four pounds of fabric um, ish, you know, that includes the box. What I did was I took a medium size flat rate box, the US priority mailbox, and just got it as full as I could. It's just bursting. So that's the quantity of fabric. I'm not gonna ship them this way because it's more expensive. Um, when I kind of did a test measuring my boxes, uh, it was less expensive because of the weight to just go by the size of the box and the weight. So that's what I'm gonna do because I'm gonna include shipping. This is one example of what I might end up with. This is actually two small Amazon boxes and then the fabrics inside, they'll be all taped up. Um, but it, it kind of filled these two boxes with fabrics. So that's kind of the volume of fabric that you're gonna see. So I'm gonna show you what is in the bundles um, and I have them all right here. So it's all of these bundles. Now between each of the six boxes, it's substantially the same fabrics. There is one bundle I think that was kind of a mi mix match of fabrics because once I had everything, I think it was this one. Once I had everything kind of distributed evenly, I ended up with some extras, and so I kind of just randomly uh, evened them out. So, um, it, but they're substantially the same. So let's just kind of go through and show you what I have here. So I started out with some of my very favorites. This was like walking down memory lane for me because I was just reminded of all the projects I had done all those years ago. So these are all kind of woven tapestry type weight fabrics. And, you know, they're all kind of random pieces. So this was more of a, a square shape, but I mean, gorgeous book covers that those will make. So this is a bundle. Some of the pieces are different shapes. Um, like this one, I guess is also kind of square. A lot of them, were maybe longer, you know, one direction, more rectangular, um, but you can get an idea. So there's each, each one has one, two, three, four, five pieces. This is kind of a, a chenille, more of a, an upholstery where these are more tapestry type fabrics, um, but they're all in a similar, those were all used in similar projects that I did. So I've got a bundle of those, five pieces of those. And then some that are, I kind of tried to group them by color. So um, this one is an upholstery fabric and you can see it's more rectangular again for a journal cover. And some of them you want to be careful and not iron them because they'll melt and they have maybe upholstery backing on them. If you're careful, you can still iron them if you're wanting to get a crease out but you wanna do it between other cotton fabric. Just, a, a, I call it a pressing cloth and I'll just have a piece of scrap fabric in between so that my iron doesn't touch this because some of these fabrics, like I said, they will melt be, depending on what they're made out of. So you have to just be careful. You can kind of tell from the texture of it and the backing if it's an upholstery fabric or if it's you know not an upholstery fabric. Um, but some nice, they're all wovens. You know, these are not printed, these are, all, you know, just beautiful woven fabrics. Um, different weights, so some of them are thicker, uh, but I think will work still for journals. I try to pick out anything that I thought could work for a journal cover. And then also other projects, which at the end of this video, well, after I go through these, I'm gonna actually show you some other projects and things that I have done over the years using my scraps from my decorating jobs. So this one again is an upholstery fabric, so it's a little thicker and stiffer, and then you know just kind of a solid, a solid red-ish stripe, kind of again a woven fabric. So there's that bundle, and then sometimes I had to maybe substitute one, but for something similar in, from a different group. So this one, every every box does have two pieces of this. This I actually had used in my own my own drapery um, for my own master bedroom. And it's just a really beautiful, um, kind of a, a chenille 
brocade type fabric. Um, I just love that fabric. So each each one has a good uh, size piece of this. Two of them, some of them are actually all larger because I have quite a bit of that. Um, this one is another kind of more stiff, you know, stiff but thin fabric that would just be a really pretty cover, almost like a book cloth-ish kind of feel. This is woven, but it's printed, and it's it's kind of got that really fresco, grapevine kind of Tuscan look um, to it, but it's uh, just a nice linen fabric, so that'll be great for a book cover or other project. So a nice big piece of that. And then again, this one is, you can kind of see how big these are. They're bigger than that book cover I showed you. So you'll still have some left over. I, I wanted to keep them in case you, you know, large enough so that you can kind of decide where in the design you want it. But that's just another really pretty fabric. This one's heavier also. Set with that one aside. Um, again, this one is, I think this one was kind of more of a random one. This one was the one of the fabrics I used in the costumes that I just did. So I really like that. This one has kind of an upholstery backing on it, so you'd want to be careful. You can iron it, but again, using a cloth to protect it. If you're gluing these down for covers, you'll be able to get the wrinkle out then. This was the same as the one I showed you. And then here I've got another upholstery one with that upholstery backing on it. And I have the size actually 15 by 19. So see, some of them are quite a bit larger. Um, you might even be able to get two book covers out of it, but I thought that was a nice kind of a, a tweed look with brown and lots of multicolors. I don't think you'll be disappointed. I think you'll be able to make all kinds of things with these fabrics. And then this one is like a faux suede upholstery too that will be really nice on a book cover or other project. So those, there's a total of 41 pieces in here I counted. So just all kinds of different, a nice variety, I think. This is actually just a canvas. So it's a lighter weight canvas fabric, but that's really pretty and bold. This is also a uh, more of a canvas weight, maybe a little lighter, but that sturdy canvas. And it's a really pretty paisley pattern. I upholstered a couple of chairs um, that were button tufted in the back and actually had the buttons matching and everything um, in that project. And then this is fun. I always love chucks and this check has kind of a little polka dot in it. But again, it's not a printed fabric. It's actually a woven fabric. These all folded back nice. I had them all, all folded and pressed nice. Oh, and I love this one. This one's a printed fabric. You can see it's, but that's really pretty. I think I had, this was actually my valance in my, I think with these two in my country kitchen in my last house. Then this is kind of um, a pale yellow real soft yellow and it's kind of has a quilted texture to it in a diamond pattern that's nice and then a couple of reds this one kind of just has a, a herringbone and a stripe in the texture of it but again it's a woven fabric and then this is another piece of the just red upholstery fabric and then what else do we have? This is, oh, a random bu bundle, I think. So it, it will have some different different things in it too. Actually, I think this one, I can't remember which one was the random one now. This one might be it, um, but it has another bold printed canvas fabric. And this is the same one, this is the same one, this is another repeat. This is really pretty little red with a little polka dot, another woven. And that was a repeat. 
and then just a, a bigger kind of check again a woven a little bit of leopard that's nice printed and then this is the nice big buffalo check that's a woven so it's the same on either side and then this is another piece of that or very similar if it's not the same with that other printed one so that bundle and then last but not least silks so I did a lot of silk obviously with draperies and things this was actually my duvet cover which is a silk a woven silk it's just gorgeous and kind of this red and gold and you can actually this is the the right the right side of it but there you can even switch it and use the wrong side of it too so there's a nice big piece of that. This is the only one in this bundle that isn't silk, but I put it with it because of the weight is very similar and it's just a nice little stripe, but it's not silk. But all of these then are silk. So there's this check and a solid. And some of them, the solids might be a different color, but there's a really pretty red. A larger check there's actually a couple of pieces of that I had plenty of that and then a couple of different stripes so a lot of variety really gorgeous all of them gorgeous fabrics um, I mean some of these anywhere from 20 to a hundred dollars a yard kind of fabrics so I'll bundle these all up back up later and I want to show you some of the uh, fun things that you can do besides book covers. So you can do, like I said, you, just what you expect as a using for the whole cover of the book. But you can also, maybe you're doing a book like this where you've um, used decoupage or some wallpaper or whatever you've used and you want to just do a spine cover. I know this one's slow stitched, but you can just even do a really pretty spine cover on a more plain book cover. Maybe you're using an old book that you like the grunginess of the book cover, but you need a spine for it because it didn't have a spine. So you can always, you know, I have plenty of videos how to make your own spines um, and then you do spine covers like this one was done. So uh, you can look, I'll, I'll maybe either try to find the videos and link them below or you can look through my playlists and you'll see different projects that are, are books that I've created. You can also do like this one was an open spine where you see the backs of the pages, but there's a tab that you use to kind of connect everything to the cover. You can always do the, the tab in some decorative fabric with an old book cover, or maybe you cover with fabric and use a contrasting fabric for the tab part. So, you know, a couple of different ideas. Um, I think I'm going to do some even where I don't wrap the fabric around the book, where I just really cut it and leave it raw edged around the book. So some of your pieces might not be big enough to wrap all the way around, or they're too thick. Maybe they're a thicker one of these tapestry ones or something. I'm still going to do it like that and just leave my edges raw um, by either using pinking shears so they don't fray or just let them fray. So there's a couple of ideas there. And then one thing that I'm doing right now is um, I actually have made, I keep this file folder of just patterns that I've made. I'd have an idea to make something, wouldn't have a pattern for it. These are pieces for my stuffed pumpkins, but I, and I'll show you those, but I also have some round pillows that look like pizza that I'm going to show you. I have those patterns in here and I have... Um, you know, this will be the, the center of my pillow. I'll leave that out so I can kind of show you. This was the end for um, bolster pillows that you can piece together and make some patchworky kind of things. What else do I have in here? I did a lot of um, upholstery. I mean, I would take these fabrics and, and figure they're so gorgeous. Even if I take the tiniest little piece, piece them together in a patchwork sort of way, I used a harlequin pattern, and I, I should have it here. No, nope, that's a triangle. I just made a, out of just some recycled card stuff, um, this pattern, and that is for my harlequin pattern. So just piecing those together, you know, starting in strips, 
and then putting the strips together. And I've used that to actually upholster things or make pillows or a carpet bag style satchel or purse or whatever. Uh, did a lot of that. You can stripe them. I've made stockings with them. Uh, I have these patterns for um, like instead of stockings, even a little mitten. And I have different size birds that I would do stuffed birds and then use copper wire, thick copper wire legs, and then put them on like a little spool as a pedestal. And those are super cute just to put on a shelf kind of thing. So just, you know, make up, you know, get inspired by something, make up your own patterns and then just have kind of your own little, you know, um, set of patterns that you can make different stuffed things with fabric. So one of the stuffed things that I did uh, was, let me put that aside, are these stuffed, we'll do these first stuffed pumpkins. So this one is in burlap and then I've done, you know, some with the chenille fabrics. So I kind of kept out anything orange or that for myself so that I could make these pumpkins. Um, I just leave them, they match my breakfast room really well. So. I have a little arrangement on my window seat or, um, you know, that kind of thing. So I leave mine out kind of all the time, but they're great for fall decor. So as a gift for somebody, or maybe you want to sell them in your own Etsy shop or something like that. But I have, I used to sell in a little retail store where I had a space. And so I did a lot of this kind of anything handmade. So just in the last day or so, I cut with my fabric scraps I, I've done 18 of those little pumpkins, so they still need to be stuffed and finished, but um, all the different sizes, depending on what size scraps I had. Pillows, obviously. This is kind of one of my pillows that I have made a ton of these and sold in my shop, and I've kept a couple for myself. Because to me, these are like a scrapbook. You, you know, you'll even recognize some of the fabrics in here. Um, and they've gotten faded over the air because this one was really green before. But I've, I've just, this it just kind of reminds me of all the different decorating jobs I've done. And when you take all these kind of scraps, one way to kind of tie them all together and make them kind of ground them and give them a cohesive look is to use um, a leopard print or uh, like the any black and white little check or something like that. And it really kind of pulls everything together. The other thing that I have and will probably be listing, I'm thinking maybe by the yard because not knowing what kind of project you're gonna do, you will like to use maybe some nice trims. These are all really gorgeous trims. And I bought these by the bolt. So it's like shopping in a store, but I, I'm never gonna use all of this. And so I think I'll just do like maybe at its wholesale pricing or something and just do it you know by the yard because once it's done it's done i'm not going to reorder and keep carrying this but i i'll maybe do some in by the yard for ones that i have a large quantity of and then maybe ones that i have just the end of a small amount i'll do some bundles again like the fabric bundles and put some fun trims in there so um, that's something else to look for and then let's see another pillow idea so you can make, you know, those are round ones and those I had just made my own, you know, my own pattern piece. So you can do it any size you want. Um, but I had just made these kind of pizza looking pieces. And actually when I cut these off, uh, when I'd sew these, they may not be perfect at these ends. Once I had finished sewing all the pieces together, then I would trim them with a large circle pattern that I made to get them exactly perfect for my pillow size. And I would do the kind of iron on interfacing that irons on one side, just to kind of glue everything together with the fabric backing, if that makes sense. But I'm gonna look through, I have a scrap uh, box over there where I was starting to piece together things for projects. I'll show you that and, and I think I might have an example. But anyway, you can take all these gorgeous fabrics and create your own larger piece fabric by just piecing them together. So these are like standard bed size pillows. And again, you know, these are all upholstery fabrics that I just kind of made some 
patchworky design and then put some trims and buttons and my leopard to kind of tie it all together and my trim with just a solid, you know, backing on the other side. So, you know, you can do any size. If you have all these little pieces, you put them together and make something larger. So I've grabbed some pieces that I had just to give you an idea of what I was talking about. So in this case, I took my Harlequin pattern and instead of making it where they go the same direction so it looks like diamonds, and I don't know that I have a sample of that, but I might, I'll look. Uh, I, I flipped them so that it made like a chevron pattern. So this would be a pillow cover that I can finish off and make another little small decorative pillow. Uh, and what I meant by putting that backing on, this is, the pieces were pieced together first, but then I wanted all those edges cleaned up. So again, I used, I would use a pressing cloth because they're all different fabrics, different weights, different materials, and I don't want anything to melt my iron. So I use a pressing cloth to get all those seams opened up. And then I just put this backing on it. It irons on one side. Uh, and that way it's kind of keeps everything together. And now when I go to put it together as a pillow or stuff it, all my seams are gonna be nice and kind of permanent. So some of these fabrics, depending on when you start working with them, you'll see some of them really unravel just because they're woven fabrics. Um, so depending on how big the weave is, some of them are more difficult to work with than others because you're working with, you know, again, different weights, different types of fabric. but. It's, it's doable. So um, that's kind of one idea. When I've cut all those circles, so I started out with this just to kind of show you again, this is a started one. This is a smaller version of that pillow. My pieces, I'd need a couple more pieces here to finish it off. Um, I've done actually my tree skirt, seeing this reminds me, my Christmas tree skirt is done in this way in all these decorated fabrics with the trim on it and the leopard and the whole deal. Uh, so you can make a tree skirt, you know, maybe out of it. So I've, I've sewn them all together to this point, flip it over, iron, you know, all these either in one direction or open. Sometimes one direction's easier because of how thick they are. Um, finish all that off and then I could you know iron on that other piece and cut it so I have I don't have it anymore because I haven't made these in forever but I had a larger piece of of a pattern for my circle to clean up this edge and when I've done that then I end up with all these different size edges and so I've taken all those this was where one was I don't know if you can see that I've taken all those edges and sewn those together. And because they were circular, it forms just this larger circle. Now, I don't know what I'm gonna do with this particular one, but when I started doing this, um, let me show you a piece. Because it was rounded, you see how that's all pieced together? It's like I didn't even wanna throw away those trimmed pieces. I wanna use every little bit. So I sewed them together and I, you know, it came in this rounded shape. So then I took it and I thought, oh, that looks like the top of a, of a boot. Okay, so here is my funny boot stocking. I know it's hard to fit into this. Maybe if I get rid of some of this, you'll see it better. So I had those rounded pieces that I sewed together and I just kept going until it got smaller and smaller. And then I lined it with vel red velvet, put a little hanger on it. And then in the front here, just did some cute little buttons. And then down here, used my leopard to kind of tie it all together and then did like a, a heeled shoe. So you can do any shape that you want. Um, but I did this and this has stuffing in it to here, but then the rest of it, you would be able to, you know, stuff all your goodies in. And so this is a really long stocking, but you, you could do them any shape, any size that you want. But that's just another idea of something to do even with your scraps. So again, here was a piece that I started kind of choosing a colorway. I don't know what I'll ever do with all these. I kind of got things to this little point and then stopped. Here's another. This is kind of what that piece looks like as you've had, you know, different random 
tops of those pizza looking pieces, you know, once I cut my circle and then, you know, start adding more and it's going to end up having this kind of wavy, you know, strange looking pattern, but it's creating fabric out of fabric. Um, the other thing, this was another pillow top where even just the tiniest little, you know, have a piece of embroidery or something that you have here and just make a frame out of your little p pieces, you know, for the pillow um, and then just some kind of backing I need. And again, this was me sewing all those pieces and see how they're thick or thin or all different until you get them all together and then cut that up into any kind of shape that you want. This could end up being, you know, cut it squared off or weird and make it a pocket on a bag. So that's another thing that I had made. Um, this one with the silks would be really fun. This is actually, I did not make this. This is actually a crazy quilt, a silk crazy quilt that's vintage, that was all damaged. And so I cut it apart and just, you know, did a section and then did pretty fabrics and trims to make um, some pillows. So you could do that with them. This is another one pillow top again with a larger piece in the center and then just using those scraps to make a frame around it so for your smaller pieces because even if you do make book covers with some of these they're gonna there's gonna be scraps left over that you don't want to toss you know make a pin cushion out of it or something these are totally different fabrics which i haven't included i may do some bundles later on that are with some recycled denim and some burlap um, and some like cottons and that sort of thing that are thinner that you can do applique. So these were just, you know, ironing the fabric onto that some sticky backing that's double-sided sticky and it would have paper on the other side and then cutting out your shapes and then ironing them on and then stitching them. Um, and that would be fun to do with some slow stitching too. You could do this on clothing, you know, do some designs on shirts or things like that, which I am working on something like that for my daughter-in-law. Um, but you could do, you know, some pillow covers like that. As far as the pumpkins, they don't all have to be orange anyway. You could, you could do, you know, each section a different fabric and just have them be multi-fabriced. You could make those uh, pillows that are totally round pillows that look like a basketball. That used to be a popular thing. Don't think they are now, but they'll come back like everything does. Um, and then the other thing are, um, I keep turning away, I'm sorry. Uh, are some lampshades. I have those. I'll show those in a second. Um, but the other thing is I do these bags. Again, these are with some Western fabrics and some things that I have not really included in these bundles. Uh, so I may do some separate bundles that are kind of more these types of fabrics. Again, these are just uh, recycled blue jeans. You can see where they're kind of worn. Some of them have stains or they're maybe more worn in the knees. So I'll cover them with some little patches. So you could make patches out of all these fabrics. It doesn't have to be this kind of theme. I call these junkin sacks because they're very large so that when you go to craft shows and stuff like that, you have this nice big shoulder bag for your water bottle and your wallet and then all the goodies that you buy. So, um, I have made a bunch of these and I'm gonna make some more because I have a lot of recycled denim I need to do. Um, but then, you know, they're lined and they have a nice double pocket inside and you can put a pocket on the outside, but it's just a way, you know, making patches and things like that to, to use up, again, your scraps. So some big um, junk and sacks and then uh, lampshades. So this is uh, a lampshade that's made with silk. Now it's, it's uh, probably bigger than maybe some of the sample pieces that are there, but you could do a little, you know, maybe, I don't know if it'll be this size, probably a little smaller than this maybe, um, that you'd have enough fabric to do, or you can piece them. So this is one piece of silk, and then I actually applique on it. These are cut out embroideries from an antique kimono. So the silk of the kimono was destroyed, but the, all the embroideries were so pretty that I just cut them out and um, ad glued them to the, uh, made them like patches, appliqued them to the lampshade and then put the lampshade together. So this is um, a fun thing to do. And this one is just done on mylar. So you can actually buy sheet mylar. Maybe you have a, 
a lampshade that you can peel fabric off of that the mylar is still in good shape. Otherwise, you can purchase this by sheets and just create your own new lampshade from scratch, which is um, what I did for this one. So there's lampshade in that style, or there are the fabric style that has the fabric lining inside. You can also buy this by the yard. So this was just a lamp frame, shade frame. I would find them at thrift stores, ones that weren't crooked or bent or anything. And then this is with um, cotton fabrics but it, it was just all pieced together. So you can imagine, and I have done this in the past using all these kind of fun, fun scraps and creating some really fun lampshades that I would then put on the handmade lamps bases that I made out of found objects. So I'm, I do have, um, as far as all the lampshades that I made that I have left in my stash, I have the silk one I just showed you, I have this one and I have one more. And I'm probably going to list these in my Etsy shop too because I just don't have a use for them in my own life. I haven't been able to get rid of them because they were a lot of work. This one is, again, with all um, silks. I don't have any of these silks anymore, so I had wanted to kind of make this memory lampshade. So I may have to try to find a lamp for this one so I can keep it in my studio. But it's, again, just doing that crazy quilt idea, only this is new. And instead of hand-stitching between, I just used, if you can see, I used that decorative stitch that I have on my sewing machine. It's like the one decorative stitch I have besides just a zigzag, or this may even just be a zigzag, but just, you know, piece your fabrics together and then do the stitching, top stitching in, you know, something that kind of shows. And then I didn't have enough, obviously, to do the whole lamp, so I just alternated um, the panels so that every other one is just silk. And again with some flat trim and again with the, the lining so those all those parts and pieces you can buy and, and make your own lampshades so let's see i think that's i think that's it for things i wanted to show ideas i wanted to show that you could do with all of these yummy fabrics so i'm going to get these listed onto my etsy shop like i said there will only be six and then they're gone so i will get those going and i hope you have a great rest of your day i hope you feel inspired by this i know i was inspired just by seeing all my fabrics and going through them again that it's made me stop and want to actually finish projects so that's why i haven't actually been making any videos among other things so have a great rest of your day now go make something bye